Every morning, millions of people wake up and unknowingly sabotage their weight loss, not because they lack willpower, not because they're eating too much, but because of a hormonal trap that happens between 3 and 8 a.m. that nobody warned them about. Your body is fighting you, and you don't even know it. There's a metabolism researcher at Brigham Young University who grows fat cells in laboratory dishes. These cells are surrounded by every nutrient they need, all the calories they could want, but they stay tiny. They refuse to grow until he adds one single substance. Then they balloon up within hours. That substance isn't food, it's insulin. And what happens in his lab is happening inside your body right now. If you're watching this, you're searching for real answers. Hit that subscribe button and drop a comment telling me what country you're watching from. I read everyone and your support helps me keep making content that actually works. Dr. Ben Bickman isn't just another internet health guru. He's a professor of cell biology and physiology at Brigham Young University. He runs the Laboratory of Obesity and Metabolism. His research appears in over 30 peer-reviewed publications, and he spent years studying one question. Why do we actually get fat? The answer shocked the scientific community. In his lab, Dr. Bickman and his students grow fat cells in culture dishes. These cells sit in a medium filled with glucose, amino acids, and everything else needed to thrive, but they don't grow, not even a little. These cells stay small and metabolically quiet. The moment insulin enters that culture dish, everything changes. Six hours later, you can see visible fat droplets forming inside the cells. Six hours after that, those droplets are even bigger. The cells are expanding, storing energy, doing exactly what fat cells do in your body after a high-carb meal. This proves something that goes against 50 years of nutrition advice. Weight gain isn't just about calories in versus calories out, it's about hormones. Specifically, it's about insulin. When insulin levels stay elevated, your body locks into fat storage mode. No matter how little you eat or how much you exercise, your hormones are calling the shots. That's why some people can restrict calories for months and barely lose a pound. Their insulin never comes down enough to access those fat stores. You've been told that obesity is about personal responsibility. Eat less, move more, count your calories. If you're overweight, you must be eating too much, right? Wrong. There's a tragic medical condition that proves this beyond any doubt. It's called diabulimia. Young people with type 1 diabetes sometimes deliberately reduce their insulin doses to stay thin. Studies show that approximately 1 in 11 adults with type 1 diabetes has engaged in this behavior. Here's what happens. They can eat whatever they want, any amount of food, any type of food. But because their insulin levels are kept low, they stay extremely thin. The calories pass right through their system. Their bodies literally cannot store fat without adequate insulin, no matter how much they consume. This isn't a recommendation. Diabulimia is life-threatening. These individuals develop severe complications, including ketoacidosis, kidney damage, neuropathy, and early death. The average age of death for someone with diabulimia is around 45 years old, 13 years younger than people with type 1 diabetes who manage their condition properly. But this medical reality proves a vital point. You cannot gain fat unless insulin is elevated, period. If weight gain were purely about calories, these individuals would be obese despite low insulin. But they're not. They're dangerously thin. This demonstrates that hormones, not just calories, control fat storage. And insulin is the master switch. Right now, while you're watching this video, your body is preparing for tomorrow morning, and it's setting a metabolic trap. Around 4 a.m., several hours before you wake up, your cortisol levels start climbing. This is the dawn phenomenon, and it happens to every single person who sleeps. 
Between 3 and 8 a.m., your body releases a surge of hormones, including cortisol and growth hormone. These hormones serve a purpose. They tell your liver to break down stored glycogen and release glucose into your bloodstream. This gives you energy to wake up and start your day. Your brain needs fuel. Your muscles need fuel. This is your body's natural alarm system. But here's the problem. That glucose surge triggers an insulin response. By the time you open your eyes, your insulin levels are already elevated. Your body is in a state of insulin resistance. You're more resistant to insulin in the morning than at any other time of day. The American Diabetes Association and Cleveland Clinic both confirm this affects roughly half of all people with diabetes. But even people without diabetes experience this metabolic shift. Now, imagine what happens when you wake up and immediately eat a bowl of cereal, toast with jam, a muffin, orange juice, a smoothie with fruit. You're adding fuel to a fire that's already burning. Your insulin spikes even higher. And remember what we learned. High insulin means your body switches into fat storage mode instead of fat burning mode. This is where Dr. Bickman's insulin trick comes in, and it's beautifully simple. Wait two hours after waking before you eat anything. That's it. No complicated meal plans, no expensive supplements, no grueling workouts, just time. During those first two hours, your body is already giving you energy. Your cortisol is high, which means you're alert and focused. Your liver is releasing stored glucose. You don't need external fuel yet. In fact, eating during this window works against your natural physiology. Think of your body like a bank with two vaults. One holds the glucose in your bloodstream. The other holds your stored body fat. When insulin is high, the fat vault stays locked. You can only access the glucose vault. But when insulin levels drop, the fat vault opens. Your body can burn stored fat for energy. By waiting those two hours, you're letting your insulin naturally decline from its morning spike. You're giving your body time to switch fuel sources. You're working with your hormones instead of against them. Your brain works better during this time. Your focus is sharper. Your energy is cleaner. This is the perfect window for planning your day, going for a walk, doing light work, or having a meaningful conversation. Don't waste this peak time eating sugary carbs. After those two hours pass, it's time to eat. But what you choose matters enormously. Dr. Bickman calls this change breakfast tomorrow. Breakfast has become dessert in most cultures. Pancakes with syrup, muffins, bagels, sweetened yogurt, cereal. These are essentially candy disguised as morning food. Here's what a smart first meal looks like. Start with protein, eggs, plain Greek yogurt, meat if you want it. Protein doesn't spike insulin nearly as much as carbohydrates. It also keeps you satisfied longer. Add healthy fats, avocado, nuts, olive oil, cheese if you tolerate dairy. Fats slow digestion and provide steady energy without triggering major insulin swings. Include vegetables if you want them, spinach, tomatoes, mushrooms, bell peppers. These provide fiber and nutrients without the blood sugar roller coaster. Keep carbohydrates minimal. If you eat carbs in your first meal, make them whole grains or starchy vegetables. Keep portions small. Here's something most people miss. Make eating a ritual. Don't rush. Don't scroll through your phone while eating. Smell your food. Chew slowly. Pay attention to flavors. This isn't just about enjoyment. When you eat mindfully, your body releases digestive enzymes more efficiently. Your satiety signals work better. You naturally eat less without feeling deprived. Your nervous system stays calm instead of triggering stress hormones that raise insulin. Now I need to tell you something that might disappoint coffee lovers. Coffee in the morning can be a problem, specifically caffeine. 
Multiple studies published in peer-reviewed journals show that caffeine increases insulin secretion, especially when combined with carbohydrates. A 2002 study in diabetes care found that caffeine can decrease insulin sensitivity in humans. A 2010 study in the British Journal of Nutrition showed that consuming caffeinated coffee with a high-carbohydrate meal significantly increased the insulin response to a subsequent glucose load. Remember, your cortisol is already high in the morning. That's pushing more glucose into your bloodstream. When you add caffeine on top of that, you get an exaggerated insulin spike, even if you haven't eaten anything yet. This doesn't mean you have to quit coffee forever, but wait on it. Have your coffee after those first two hours, preferably with or after your first meal. If you absolutely need something warm in the morning, try herbal tea, green tea, or hot water with lemon. This single change helps keep your hormones balanced and prevents you from doing early damage to your metabolism before your day even begins. Your nighttime habits directly affect your morning hormones. Cortisol levels follow your circadian rhythm. When you don't get enough sleep, your body interprets this as stress. That stress response can cause your morning cortisol levels to spike two or even three times higher than normal. Higher cortisol means higher glucose release. Higher glucose means higher insulin. And higher insulin means more fat storage and more intense hunger. Multiple studies show that cortisol crosses the blood-brain barrier and affects brain regions involved in hunger and reward. In the hypothalamus, cortisol increases production of neuropeptide Y and a goody related protein, both of which stimulate appetite. At the same time, cortisol reduces leptin signaling, which normally tells your brain you're full. In the amygdala, cortisol enhances dopamine release, driving cravings for high-calorie, high-carbohydrate foods. When you're sleep-deprived, this isn't a willpower problem. Your brain chemistry is actively pushing you toward sugary, starchy foods. Getting seven to eight hours of quality sleep isn't optional. It's part of the insulin trick. Let me connect all the pieces. Dr. Bickman's insulin trick is about understanding your body's natural hormone rhythms. Morning is the one time of day when you can predict exactly how your insulin is behaving. It's elevated because of the dawn phenomenon. That's guaranteed. Later in the day, your insulin levels become less predictable. Stress affects them, activity affects them, your previous meals affect them. But in the morning, you have clarity. That's why getting your morning routine right is so important. It sets the tone for everything that follows. When you start the day with low insulin, your body stays in fat-burning mode longer. Your appetite regulates better, your energy stays stable. You make better food choices throughout the day. But when you start with an insulin spike from an early breakfast, especially a carb-heavy one, you're behind from the moment you wake up. Your body switches into storage mode, your hunger hormones go haywire, you end up in a cycle of cravings and crashes that lasts all day. Let me be completely honest with you. This isn't a miracle cure. You're not going to wake up tomorrow 10 pounds lighter. That would be impossible and unhealthy. This is about putting your body in a better hormonal state where weight loss becomes easier and more sustainable. Over weeks and months, you'll notice changes. Your appetite becomes easier to control. You're not constantly hungry. Intense cravings for sugar and carbs start to fade. Your energy stays more stable throughout the day. Your belly fat gradually reduces. Your mental clarity improves, especially in the morning. This approach helps your body's natural fat-burning systems work properly before metabolic problems become serious. It's about prevention and optimization, not quick fixes. The people who succeed with this aren't looking for dramatic overnight changes. They're willing to work with their biology instead of fighting it every single day. For decades, obesity research focused on calories and willpower, but the science is clear now. Hormones drive the process. 
Insulin is the gatekeeper that decides whether your body burns fat or stores it. Your body isn't your enemy. It's responding to the hormones you are creating through your eating patterns and lifestyle choices. The morning gives you a predictable window where you can influence your insulin levels. Don't waste it by eating sugary carbs the moment you wake up. Give yourself those two hours. Let your insulin come down. Let your body access stored fat. This is the one thing you can control without spending money, without complicated meal plans, without joining a gym. Just time, just patience, just working with your body. If this information helped you understand something you've been struggling with, type yes in the comments. Let me know this made sense. If you know someone who's been trying to lose weight without success, share this video with them, your parents, your friends, anyone who needs this message. Hit the like button so more people can find this information. Subscribe because I'm bringing you more research-backed health content that cuts through the noise and gives you strategies that actually work. Your health matters. Thank you for watching.